is General Nine is going today, and welcome back to another video. Why do I not say Minecraft video? It's because we're actually not going to be playing Minecraft right at this moment. I might play it later on today, but you know, you know, you know. You know. Uh, I want to start something new on my channel as uh, my future career goal, or my career goal right now that I want to do in the future is game design. And previously, I worked with uh, programs, game programs, and stuff like that. And me in particular. Uh, I don't know how to code and I've tried learning how to code and it's just like learning a new language like Spanish and that is one weakness for me like a, a really bad weakness I cannot learn a new language if I couldn't even say myself I, I just can't so um, I've worked with this one program the program's called stencil and basically you can create games without coding it's a drag and drop uh, coding platform basically uh, you drag and drop codes into the game and it codes the game for you but you can understand stuff and everything like that i've tr played around with it a few times in the past so i'm familiar with the program the program is pretty cool it's pretty easy to use and uh basically what this series is going to be is a walkthrough on me creating my game and you're going to see the raging you're going to see the the freaking frustration oh my god i remember <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's just get started into it so we're gonna open up stencil here as you can see i have a, a few games here none of them are complete a bunch of them were fails <laughs> but hopefully this game here won't be a fail and i'm gonna try my best try my best to just stay with the game and figure all the problems out and you know get the game complete at the end of the day so our idea for this game is going to be a dropper type game let's think of um think of flappy bird but instead of horizontal, it's vertical. So instead of going to the right, you're going down. And you can only move to the left or right. And you have to avoid, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You have to avoid like obstacles and stuff like that. Uh, it's the same just as that one game. Um, the dropper game, well, it's not really dropper game. It was like, I forgot the name of the game. But basically, you would jump up on platforms and you keep going up. It's the same gist, but we're going down. So first thing I'm going to do is act like this is an actual tutorial. I don't know how to do everything. But I do know how to do certain things. So I'm uh, talking away as if I'm doing a tutorial for those who want to be game designers out there. You're using the same program as me. You can walk through with me and get some hints, some tips, and things of that nature to create your own game. <coughs> Excuse me. God, I got to clean my throat. So let's create a new game here. Once we do that, we're going to go to blank game. You get sample kits and stuff like that. But... I like to be original and create my own stuff as the game goes by, so we're just going to press next. Now, if you're making a mobile game, use this right here as you can see right there. The reason why they do that is uh, you can create a mobile game, you can create a desktop game, but if you want to actually publish the mobile game on like uh, Android or iPhone, you're actually going to have to pay for the full version of Stencil. From here, you can create a website game and just put it anywhere. And you'll be fine you don't have to pay anything but if you want to get on those platforms like a uh, mobile then you're gonna have to pay for stuff <clears throat> so uh the name for our game i haven't really thought of a name except the dropper but you know uh people refer that to minecraft because that's a mini game the dropper so i, I don't want to do that so i'm gonna call it um the flightless descent reason being is because you know i'm golden jay people refer to me as a bird because my logo is a bird and let's just say that a bird who has a broken wing or something I'm on those lines he can't fly so he's descending I don't know it's like a brain story but we're gonna call it the flightless I uh, hopefully that's how you spell flightless the flightless descent I think I spelled descend wrong descend is it like that or like that I think it's what it is descend I don't know I'm just making guesses there I think it's what it is uh, let's make our thing 640 by 480 and let's make it a 1280 by 720 so it could be HD I believe that's the right uh that's the right dimension for it. not not really sure <laughs> not really sure I play around with Photoshop a lot wish you had to do dimensions but nowadays I just use presets I've created in the past you go to pixel and you make it a preset and you never look at that preset ever again so you don't really rememorize the dimensions but uh let's just press create there please 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 mind the names of my games uh this was like late at night <laughs> i was bored 
But now that we're into everything right here, you can see we got actors, backgrounds, font, scene, sound, tile set, actor behavior, scene behaviors, and you can actually put your own code in there, which I will not be using this at all because I do not know how to code. I do not know how to code. So the first thing that we're going to make is the actual game itself. And then we'll make scenes like the title screen, the upgrade screen, the credits, the how to play, the tutorial, every, everything like that. But first we gotta make the main scene, the main scene that everybody's gonna be on all the time. We're gonna name this scene Game. All right, now that we named the scene Game, you see we got tiles here, we got pixels and tiles. I believe it's the same 736. Why is it 736? It should be 720. It's weird, it's really weird. All right, so 44, I mean 40 by 22 tiles and it went to seven, okay. I guess I'll go back to 36. It's just it freaking auto corrected me. Okay, what is it now? Okay, so uh, that's that's really that's really weird. I don't know why it's doing that. But now that we have this, we can add a background color. But at the end of the day, we're gonna have an actual background that we're gonna make in Photoshop. So the background color doesn't really matter right now. But for time being, we'll just make it um let's make it yellow. Oops, not green. Yellow. Let's make it yellow for the time being. Now create. Now we actually do have our scene. Once it once it loads. It should. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we actually have our scene. This is a scene that the game is going to be played on. Now, I just realized something. Since our game is going to be vertical instead of horizontal, uh, I believe our width should be lower than our height. So our height should be low, uh, higher than our width. That way it can actually give that portrait look, then that landscape look, if you know what I mean. And I believe if I can go into properties, I can change it here. Uh, let's just switch these around. Let's make this 736 and then make this 1280. See if that makes a difference. I don't know what that beep was, but uh, that, that seems to be making a difference. Uh, let's zoom out. Where's the zoom thing? I haven't used this in forever. So this is our scene here. As you can see, we got the whole yellow square, the whole yellowness here. Now we're going to need an actor. We're just going to download a basic actor from Stencil Forwards. Later on, we're actually going to make ourselves the actor, but we're just going to use like a basic actor that we can just, you know, use. Um, use this snake. The snake's looking at me in a certain way. I like it. <clears throat> Let's just use the snake there. Now, the, the Stencil Forge has a lot of um, presets that you can use for your own uh, goods and stuff. You know, you have behaviors, you have backgrounds here. See, we could actually download a background here and use it, but I actually want to make my own. Instead of downloading one, you got font, so you got sound, you got tile sets and stuff like that. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what tile sets is later i believe or we can do it we can do it in this episode or this um this i don't know what else to call it because i always call minecraft videos episodes but we can do it in this part video you know what i mean you know what i mean so let's go back to the stencil book snake here uh let's see it doesn't have any of the behaviors events collisions the collision order i guess that's okay uh properties and stuff like that so uh we're gonna go inside of our settings here okay we go settings the reason why we're going inside of our settings is because i want to set up the um the uh what do you call that what do you call it here? the collision group there we are i want to set up the collision group. and the reason why you want to set up the collision group is you want to make it where the game reacts when certain things collide within each other so basically when a player collides with uh let's say uh a wall when the player collides with the wall the player will die and he'll have to start over now if you don't have collision groups a player will just go straight through the wall and you won't die and it'll be a stupid game basically so we're gonna go to not attributes we're gonna go to group once we're at group we're gonna create a new group actually we can keep the player group here but yeah let's let's, let's actually keep the group. we're gonna create a new group called wall Right, we're gonna create a new group called wall, and the group wall is gonna collide with the players. So that means when we go to players, players collide with the wall and tiles. Tiles are the little tiles that I showed previously up in the Central Forge, and people use that for, um, let's say Mario. Let's just say Mario. Uh, when you're playing Mario, you walk across the floor. That floor is a tile set. That's why. Uh, players collide with tiles because that's a tile set. You know what I mean? Hopefully, you guys know what I mean when I say that. So now we have walls, and now we have this little book snake. 
Now we gotta go to the properties of Cynical Tech. And you see how it says the, the group is an actor when it trains that player. Now let's go to collisions and you see it's the same as actor type. Um, I don't really change this that much, but you can change it to players and then it collide with whatever players collide with. And then in the properties, you can pick something else. I don't know why you would, but they did it that way. So let's just keep it that way. So now we want to add figures to the game. Right now, if you put the put the actor in there, he's just gonna stay there. He's just gonna stay still. He's not gonna move around at all so we're gonna add gravity let's go to properties not properties actually where is it physics there we go we're gonna go to physics now we have gravity horizontal and then we got gravity vertical so we're gonna change this to 20 we're gonna test it and see how like how bad the gravity really is i don't know how bad it is like right now but we're gonna change it probably because you know 20 is pretty high now i believe now we're gonna go to the book snake and we're gonna go to physics now we're going to be affected by gravity is yes. Uh, we don't want him to rotate, so we're going to change that to no. And then what kind of actor type? Determines whether the actor type can move or not. He can move from gravity, so he can't be pushed. Um, let's change that to he can't be pushed. I think, I think that's good. I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's good. So now let's go to the game. And we're gonna go to actors here and we're gonna select our essential book thing. I don't know why it does that little line thing. It's just a glitch with the game. It doesn't really matter. I've dealt with it before and it, it just goes away after a while. So we're just gonna place this little guy right at the top here. Right there, you see how it went away and it's not there anymore. So we're just gonna place the little guy right at the top. And let's test the screen out and see what we got so far. Alrighty, uh, let's see. It appears that he's not moving. Let's change the full screen. It's all weird. Let's go to view and so uh, I can't zoom out. I can zoom in, but I can't zoom in. Well. But it appears it's like he's not moving, or else he would have fell, and it would be a black screen. He's still. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we can move up and down. Yeah, it appears like he hasn't moved an inch. All right, so I think that's because if I go to physics here, it says he cannot be pushed. So let's set that to normal. Now that that's on normal, yes, it's on normal. Let's go to the game here. and let's see, let's see. I think everything is good and we're ready to go now that he's on normal. So let's test the scene once more. All right, that's good, that's good. As you can see, he actually did fall or begin to fall. He actually went just like that. But one thing that I did notice, the game's too big, so. I think we should have stayed with that 480. I think it was 480. I'm not sure how big it was, but I, I, everything I said. It was like 640. It was 640 by, by 480. I think that's what it was. So let's change that to 480 by 640. Because, wait, 680. What? Was it 480? Or was it 420? Nah, it was 40. 40. I think it was 40. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So let's see. If we go to tiles, it's 15 by 20. It's 40 by 640. All right. I think. Oh, it's a lot smaller. I think that's good. So let's let's just center him again. I, th I think that's good. We can zoom in a little bit now. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Yeah. So as you can see. He actually was falling to his death, which is which is really good. So now what we're gonna do, I believe I want to set this as a tile set now. So uh, we're just gonna get a basic tile set again, and we're just gonna download, let's download colorful blocks. I like the way that colorful blocks sound. I like colorful blocks. Let's just download colorful blocks. So you see we got sketch, got some Minecraft. Oh dang, I mean it's black. I like this. I like the colorful blocks. It's pretty dope. I like that. All right. So now that we got the colorful blocks, it's really good. We can go to the game here and keep in mind that colorful blocks is a tile set. So now what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to go back in settings, groups, and we're gonna have to set players to. Oh, it's already reacting to tiles, which is really good. So I forgot that was our reactive tile. Let's exit out of this. All right. So now that that's reacting to tiles, we can go to tiles here and see we got the whole entire tile. Set. I wanted to use black because originally I was going to go first try and just get like an box or whatever. 
But since we already got it, we're good. So, <laughs> since this is the starting point, we're gonna actually wanna do a, a little bit of We're gonna do a little bit of um, decorating here and actually make this look good. Go across the screen like that. And then we need to do something. Oh, cool. I didn't even know that. Wow. You feel like most people are still struggling with them sometimes. And actually, like, I can't. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, it's okay. Yeah. There we go. And yeah, it's okay. Alright, so basically, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make it where when he hits the towel, he dies, basically. And then he'll have to start at the, the start, basically. We'll have to start back over at the very start of the game. And there we go. We're just gonna put it like this, because right now, um, the background isn't repeating, which means that the game isn't endless, and he's not gonna fall um, for endless amount of time. So this is our towel set here. Now we're gonna add some cold into the snake. We gotta add it into the snake itself, or we can actually add it into the game. The, uh, of the game. So basically, uh, at the start of my game, we're going to throw it into the snake, and then it will get all confusing and stuff. But, uh, I, I just didn't like it. So I'm ag actually going to add it into the game events here. Um, the way to do this, there's two ways you can actually do this. One way is to actually put it inside of the, the coding here for the game, or you can actually add a behavior. Uh, which is the same thing as this, or you can actually download a, a default behavior right here from a uh, stencil. And then they actually do have a uh, precinct, precinct, I believe that's how you pronounce it, precinct behavior. If you go to behavior, you can click that thing. You, can, you got some precinct behavior, so you got the title, intro title, you got some background music, stuff like that. But uh, let's go back to what I said at the beginning about the events, the behaviors being one of the events. So basically, the event here, you can add an event. Uh, the one that we're going to do is collide, just like this, but I'm actually going to add a new behavior. Uh, behavior is basically, let's just add a default behavior here, I do permit me to choose. So this is a behavior, if we go to edit the behavior, it'll load up and it'll actually be an event. As you see right here, it's actually an event. So if we go back to the game, you see how it looks the same, right? It's exactly the same. It's just a behavior, so you can add a bunch of events to one scene or one uh, person or character or stuff like that. Uh, but we're not actually going to be using uh, items left, so we can go back to behaviors and remove the back. Now the way to create your own is basically just go to create new and then we'll have behavior here. You can create your own behavior and ours is a scene behavior, which is going to be name, let's see. Player, player versus wall. Player versus wall. I want to capitalize that W because I'm winning. Okay, so player versus wall. Let's create that player versus wall, and it's gonna load up. And then we're gonna add a simple event just like this. It's gonna be a collisions event, and I always get confused on which one to use right here. And it's not members of group. It's actor and title. Any actor collides with. Yeah, collisions between. I'm gonna say type and type. Let's go collisions in between that, and then uh, it doesn't actually do the the tile. So we're using our own one. So let's just do actor of type. Let's see, actor, actor. That's the wrong one. See, I really do get confused up in here. Nope. Nope. None of those. What about members of group. Nope. And nope. Let's see. If we actually go for the snake here. And if we do the same thing, something else. Hmm. Let's see. I can. Huh. And then it's the same thing. Let's see. Hmm. Choose attribute. An attribute is basically. I can explain this. Well, I'll just explain it on the way doing it. You could add an attribute, and I think this is the way that I'm going to have to do it. If it doesn't, even, it doesn't even add like a tile set. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't even add a tile set. Okay, so 
this is where this is where I, I have to start raging, like I said before. <laughs> so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work through this. We're not we got this guys, we got this, we got this. Accurate type. Hold up. It's a group. Tau says is a group, right? So if I choose group and group, choose group. There we go, tiles. So when an actor of players hits an actor of tiles, there we go. Player versus wall. When an actor of players hits an actor of tiles, so now let's just delete all of these. Actually, we can do like mm, nah. Let's just let's just remove all of these here. Like, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There we go. So now, uh, let me let me go back. Let me go back. You see where I created walls here, right? Walls, tiles. I created walls just in case you want to use an actual actor as the actual wall. Uh, let, let me explain. Let's see. Let's go to the game, right? The scene. Uh, instead of this being a tile set on the wall, you can actually have a chosen an actor like this. And you can make it where he doesn't get affected by gravity, nothing can push him around, so he's basically staying in there still. And anytime an actor hits this type of actor, which is a wall, he'll die. But the bad thing is about that, you can't make it look pretty like this, because you have to actually like go like right here and bang and like get another one, click it and like, oh my god, oh my god, bang like that. And then it gets all like, like, and then you gotta do it all the way around. So uh, the way, the actor way, the, I mean not the actor way, the tile set way is the one that I prefer. I prefer doing the tile set way. So now that we got player versus wall, which is the same thing as player versus tile, pretty much. Uh, we're going to go to our actor. Then we're going to go to our properties right there. And you see it says kill actor, actor like kill actor, actor leaving scene. We're going to go to kill actor. And then we can, you know, first actor, second actor. We're going to kill the first actor here. Now when a player, when an actor of players hits the actor of tiles, it will kill the first actor, which is players. So now what we're going to have to do is kind of do a game. And we're going to actually have to install the behavior, which is player versus wall. Now, it's installed. So, if we go to test scene, everything should work. And if it doesn't, we gotta fix it. And bam, he dies. Now, what we're gonna do is add another big hero when, when player dies, respawn at XYZ. But the bad thing here is you can see it's still being weird with the extra yellow. So, I believe I'm gonna have to go into this actual settings here and then go to settings, display, here we go. And it was, what was it, what was it? The height was higher than the width, so I think this was 480. 480 by 640, oops, 480 by 640. There we go, 480 by 640. So now what we have is a snake falling onto a black brick and dying, which is what we want, which is, what is this? Oh, I forgot, I need to delete this. I need to delete this. Try when you're creating a game, try to make everything as compact as possible, as simple as possible, and as easy as possible. For example, um, let's do a basic code like um, jump. Press space to jump. That's all you gotta do. When you press space, this is what the code will look like. When space button is pushed, um, push actor with force 15, and then he'll just fall down for gravity, and then he'll hit the block, he'll collide with the block, and you know you're good every time you press space and so you know that's that's compact that's compact and like non-compact would be like when prayer gradually presses space uh send actor to xyz and then send actor back down to xyz that that's that's ridiculous just make it easy on yourself you know just make it easy on yourself now that we have that then we're actually going to make the respawn um respawn thing with the actual another behavior when player dies they respawn all right so uh, let's go back to create new i don't know why i want to have behavior uh scene no not scene behavior scene scene all right so this one's going to be called what is this one called let's just call this respawn respawn when day respawn when day let's create that free hello hey all right, respawn one day. So now we're gonna do this to win updating. Win updating is just like the same thing as saying always. So like 
Uh, this is always going to be active. When created means when you first start off the game, this will be active. And then when you use it, it won't be active no more. So let's say uh, when creating, I mean, yeah, when creating, uh, let's say when player dies, he spawns. If I put that on when creating, when player dies, he spawns. So start off the game, player dies, he respawns. You keep playing the game, he dies. He won't respawn back because it's only when creating. When drawing is just like drawing. I'll get into that later. So we're just going to do when updating for now. Now we're going to go to actors and I believe it's in properties. Uh, actor alive or dead? Hmm. Where is it? Where is it? It's in here somewhere. If it's not, then I know how to do this. I know another way to do it is alive. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So, when you can't find what you're looking for, then you gotta find other alternatives. That, that, yeah, you just gotta find other alternatives. You can see right here it says actor is alive. So what we're gonna have to do is set this to um, when updating, if, let's see, actually we're not gonna do if. Let's, yeah, we're gonna have to do if. All right, so when updating, if, Let's do equal and let's do the true right there. If actor is alive is equal to true. Well, it doesn't matter which way you put it. I'm just going to put it like that. If actor is alive, basically. When updating, if the actor is alive equals true, meaning he's alive, then we're going to do nothing. We're just going to go to the, the next thing, which is we could put stop there, but I don't want to do stop. So... Mm, excuse me, I had to burp. So I don't want to do stop. So let's, let's just put this as false, actually. So basically, if actor is alive, if it's false, meaning if he's dead, if the actor is dead, then we're going to respawn the actor. Let's see. Is it seen? I believe. Yeah, seen. So if the actor is alive, if it's false, meaning he's dead, we're going to create the actor type. Do we choose? Yeah, we're going to create a snake at... Let's see, now we're gonna have to go back to the game and actually get the coordinate of the game, which is right there in the bottom hand corner. You can see there, we got the coordinate. So he's right here. So that would be about, let's make it even. Uh, we're gonna be 70, let's say 247. Yeah, that seems good. So we're gonna create him at 240. And then Y of 70. At front, I don't know what these front and middle back things is. I really don't. I guess it's just like front middle back when you're doing a picture, front middle back or whatever, or overlay front middle back. But hopefully, hopefully that's what that really does mean. I'm just not being stupid. So basically, what happens is if you're gonna keep on updating, 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 it's gonna run through this line of code like constantly, like bang, 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 constant, constant, constant. And it's basically gonna say if the actor is alive, he's a false, which means if he's if he's dead. And then we're gonna create the stencil book snake at blah blah blah. Now, if this doesn't work, the reason why it doesn't work is because the game doesn't know when the actor is alive or dead. I mean, we know when the actor is alive or dead, but we gotta put it inside the computer so the computer can know when the actor is alive or dead. And basically, what we're gonna do that, we're actually gonna go to the stencil snake book and we're gonna make a um, when updating, when created, basically when the game started, set him to a lot. And then once he dies, and so he's dead. Now after we do that, we're gonna have to make it where once he's dead and he's created again, we're gonna have to set it to a lot again, which then creates a boolean. A boolean is basically something that says yes or no. So uh, let's say uh, true, or true, true or false, yes or no, same thing, same thing. But we're gonna see if this works first. And then if it doesn't work, then we'll go into that and then we'll wrap up the video there. Since this is coming to a, a pretty long video. So let's test this one more time and make this a I don't know why I had, didn't have any for the first time. Alright, here we go. He floats down, dies. And he doesn't get response. So that means he did something wrong. He, did, he didn't respond once he died. Floated down, he died, and he didn't respond again. So now, wait, did we even. I don't think we actually put it inside the game, do we? Oh, we didn't put it in the game. There we go. We're spawning there. Okay, now. Now it's in the game. Let's test it again. Alrighty, guys. Here we go. And we actually do get an error. Let's see. Lucky for us, this actually does give us an error. So we're going to press continue. It's going to do that. So we're going to dismiss it. And it's actually going to take us. It should take us to the error. 
it should take us to the area. It's not going to take us to the area, and I believe the area is right in here. One up thing is after is a lie, you can fault the new actor right there. So now what we're going to do, we're going to make a new actor, uh, new, uh, uh, when created, when created, and let's see. When actor is created, which means we're going to have to get a property, uh, when created, set actor is a lie, yeah, basically. So, when it's, uh, when created, let's see, how do I, how do I remember this? When created. So, we can only do it with the if. Yeah, we can only do it with the if. Since I am in a company, we're gonna do this a different way, which I love doing it this way because it makes things so much easier. So much easier. We're gonna make a balloon, not any type of balloon. There's two different types of. Um, let's actually say the behavior. Let's see if I need, I'm here. All right, let's see if we go to settings. Not exercise. We go to create new behavior. Attributes, there we go. Dang, I'm thinking about the wrong thing. So, we're actually going to be making an attribute. Now, as I showed before, I show all the attributes here. These are all the attributes that you have. Boolean is the one I'm going to be using today. So, you can have an attribute or you can have a game attribute. Now, if I go to create new, I believe it was attributes. There's no attributes. There's a way to see this that I, I forgot how to actually put this. I mean, you can create an attribute that way, but that's not the way that I want to create that. Attribute. No, 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 no. Ah, oh, there we go. Eric. How did I not see that? Okay, whatever. But uh, there's two different types of attributes here. All right, you got game attributes, and then you have the regular attributes. Game attributes is the one you're going to be using the most when you get in depth with your game. Attributes regular is the one that you're not going to be using that much because it's it's not as good as the game attributes as it can serve. So, game attributes go out through the entire game. No matter what happens, it goes out through the entire game. Attributes, regular attributes, only go out through one scene. So, for example, Let's do a uh, score, for example. Let's just do Flappy Bird score. Let's say Flappy Bird had an upgrade system where you could upgrade your bird and make it faster or whatever, have more lives, something like that. So, uh, the way that you would want to do that is with game attributes. If you did it with regular attributes, this is what the game would be like. You would go into the game, you would pass the level, you get 20 coins. And then you finish the game. You go to a different scene, which is the shop scene, where you spend your coins, and it would say zero because it's not a game attribute. A game attribute goes throughout the entire game. Let's say money, for example. Let's say um, let's say you did it with game attributes this time. Same game, Flappy Birds. You get the score. You get 20. Now, once you go to the shop, you'll see 20 as your uh, score or your money because the 20 is the game attribute. So if you have it a regular attribute. It won't say 20 because it's not going throughout the entire game. So, we're going to do a boolean of life of a game attribute. So, let's say settings here. Actually, do we actually do have to do a, a game boolean? Because the only time we're going to actually use the boolean is in the game, in this particular scene. So, we could do a regular attribute in the, in the uh, particular scene. We're gonna do a, a regular attribute. So we're gonna create attribute. It's gonna be a, a boolean attribute, and it's gonna be a lot, a lot. So be hidden. Um, if we don't do hidden, let's see. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, go ahead and show you guys right now. If we don't do hidden, if we go to the game right here, as you see, there's nothing here. And if we hit it, it contains nothing to the bigger. Let's remove it. And then let's add it back. Here it says alive, we can check it if he's alive, we can check it if he's not. So we're gonna do hide right there. So I can go back, remove, add it back. See, 
easy. It's not safe. This is it. So we're gonna hide it. All right. Now the balloon is alive or not alive. So we're gonna do wind trade. We're gonna set the balloon to the tree so you know when the game starts, he's alive. So this is where you have the game action. So this is not a game action. We're gonna go to the regular action. So right there, you see it's alive. So we're gonna set her set alive to true. And now when he's created, we're setting alive to true. So, as you see here, we have actors alive. We're gonna get rid of all of this. Well, not all of this. We're gonna get rid of this since we don't need it anymore since we have the attribute alive right here. So, now it's saying if alive, it's false. Which is meaning if he's dead. Then we're gonna create a new sense at uh, blah 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 blah. And then we're actually gonna go back and set alive back. Alive, and then we're gonna go back to um, player to the wall. There's no group, do a first actor, and since we don't actually have an attribute here, we might actually have to do a, a, the alive thing as a group attribute, yeah. Or we could combine both of these codes here, and just it'll be easier on the see. That, that's the easier part. That's um, I learned that word in economics. Thinking at the margin, there we go. This is thinking at the margin. Would you rather make a game attribute and tie up the um, alive, if it's false, alive, if it's true, or would you just pull this little bit of code into here? I think I'd rather pull this little bit of code into here and then rename this to something else like um, alive slash dead, uh, or kill, or basically this just means when he is so all he dies. So we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna paste it right into there, just like that. That way, we can actually use this alive or not attribute and set it up here, and we can configure it. So now we can just remove this, and we can basically go to the game and delete this. Here we go, and I think we're gonna actually delete it from here as well. Now we're gonna have to actually go into the settings and go to the behavior that we already have and stuff like that. that deletes. We'll do that later. So for now, uh, we'll do when an actor of player hits the actual cow, um, we're gonna kill the first actor, yes, and then we're gonna set alive to fault. There we go, we're gonna set alive to fault. And then once alive equals fault, he's gonna be created back and set alive to true. And this is just when he's actually created. Let's just let's move that up. So we don't get confused. So when he's created, alive will be true. And when he hits the walls, we're gonna kill him, and then we're gonna set a lot of faults. Once we set a lot of faults, we're gonna create a new one and set a lot of true again. And then since a lot of is true, this isn't doing anything, and we're just gonna wait till he dies again. And then once he dies, a lot of faults, and then he'll be created again. So since that all makes sense in my head, I believe it's right. We're gonna delete that, and let's go to our settings. Not our settings. Where is it? Uh, freaking blah, 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 shut up. Uh, let's go to dashboard. There, there it is. Dashboard behaviors. Scene behaviors. And it was this one. We don't need this one anymore. Let's remove that one. And we don't need this one anymore. Let's remove that one. Now let's go to our game. Respawn when dead. Let's remove respawn when dead. Just in case I could, so we could update it. So it can update. And now that we have that respawn when dead. Let's play the test the scene and see if it works. It, uh, here we go. It works, ladies and gentlemen. So now, as you can see, he falls down, he dies, he responds, and then he dies over and over and over. So, this was the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. In our next video, I believe we're actually gonna make it where we can move him left to right so we can avoid obstacles and things of that nature so that would be really fun to do but for now we're going to end the video off here thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video on how to make what we just made here uh just leave that like and leave that comment down below for new ideas of the game and stuff like that and yeah thanks for watching